Sevde, Sweden, a small town 350 km from Stockholm where you can find a very peculiar bank, Jock Bank. Jock is a members bank with 34,000 members spread all over the country that loan their money among them by passing the traditional banking system and using their bank like a shared money box. Its aim is to create an alternative model of no speculative finance serving people and little entrepreneurs. As an economic association we don't have any big owners that uh, demands profit and so on because all the 34,000 members own the bank together. That means that every member gets only one share of the bank and has the same power when it comes to the election of the board. The purpose of Jock Bank isn't making money, but offering a loaning and saving service to its members in the most sustainable way, stressing an interest-free idea of economy. Interest transfer the money the wrong way, because the people who already have a lot of money can get more money just, be just because they owe money. And the people who don't have any money get less and less money because they have to pay the interest to take a loan for buy a house or whatever they want the loan for. Jock theories about interest are those theorized by Margaret Kennedy. She explains what are the consequences of an interest-based economy. Most people think they pay interest only when they borrow money in the bank. And in fact, uh, it is quite obvious that every producer of a good has to put the interest that he pays to the bank into the price. If you look at everything you need, your people need to live, it's about 45% uh, interest they pay for on average. According to Margaret Kennedy's researches, the hidden interest on what we spend for our living is roughly 45%. If you look at who profits from these interest payments and who pays, you can see, and you subdivide the German population in 10 equal parts, you can see that 80% of the people pay more interest in the prices, that those are the people who work for their money, and with 10% in Germany it's about the same, they pay as much interest as they get from interest payments from their life insurances, savings, etc and uh, the last 10% get all that added on to their income from interest which the first 80% lose. Let's split Germany's population in 10 equal parts using a scale of increasing wealth. The grey area is the interest paid in all prices and loans. The black area is the interest earned from monetary and real assets. According to Margaret Kennedy's calculation, the 80% of worst off German population loses money because of this game. From position 1 to 8, the interest paid is more than what they earn. 10% of population on position 9 gets the same money they spend. The remaining 10% gets all that interest which the former 80% lose. So we have a constant redistribution mechanism in our money system from 80% of the people who work for their money, they pay, to 10% of the people who can make their money work for them. And you have to own about over half a million euros in order to begin to profit from the system. Finally, in Margaret Kennedy's opinion, what's the worst consequence of an interest-based economy? The money system we have right now grows exponentially. In nature that is a sign of sickness. The exponential growth occurs where things are out of order or are dying. And for instance, cancer is an exponential growth. Out of one cell you will get 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 and so on. So it grows very fast. The reason why money grows exponentially is that we have one mechanism to keep money in circulation that is called interest. And with interest, money doubles in regular intervals. If Joseph, the father of Jesus, had invested one penny or one cent in, in euros at the birth of Jesus Christ in the year zero, and you would have paid interest on this one penny about 5%. Then in the year 2000, if Jesus had come back and would have, could have gone to the bank and said, 
can I please have this one penny back with 5% uh, with interest? The bank would have had to give Jesus over 500 billion balls of gold of the weight of the earth at the price of gold in the year 2000. This is just an example to show that exponential growth cannot work over a long period. It can work in the short term, it can maybe work in the medium term, but it can never work in the long term. Money is, is produced by, um, as a loan mostly. In the OECD countries, only 3% of the money is produced as coins and, and notes. The rest of it is, is debt. And debt has to be repaid with interest to avoid getting inflation. Everything you use money for has also to grow at the same pace as you um, increase the, the, the money. And money has to be increased because you need to repay uh, earlier years debt with interest. What are the problem with an interest economy? Uh, the main problem is that it forces people to borrow more money each year in order to pay the interest on the loans they already have. Uh, if you don't do that, uh, you have to cut your other expenses in order to pay the interest and uh, this means that you have to choose between uh, exponential debt growth or a rapidly increasing unemployment. Now in September the European Central Bank is going to uh, raise again the interest rate on money. Yes. Uh, they say to counteract inflation. Yes, and this is quite wrong. I've myself done uh, statistical uh, research about that in Sweden for during a period of 20 years and uh, it very clearly shows that about four months after you have raised the interest you get the uh, top of uh, inflation or price increase and then uh, after about between eight and nine months after a raise of uh, interest you get an, an increase in the unemployment but the, and this will uh, have an impact on the prices downwards but this downward uh, is not so big as the initial uh, rise of the prices. If you rise the interest by 1% you will get an increase in inflation uh, about 0.5%. Uh, 